Okay, hi guys. Um, we are starting up with Scratch, and so you're gonna be. I'm gonna be putting content on my website. It'll update and be updated as we move through this. But uh, for now, to find work, you're gonna go to grade eleven like normal, um, and you'll find that there's been a new topic added called Scratch Program. If you click on this, you'll find that I've updated it here in this navigation, but it's not everywhere. So, for example, if, if I go back through any of these, you can see I haven't added it here because I'm not sure it's gonna stay here forever. Just for now, the way to get to it is to go through the main site, okay? Um, and this site will get updated as I add content. For now, um, just a quick intro to Scratch and, and what you need to know to, to get started. Um, you can work on an online version of it, or you can download the, the um, standalone version, which you should do. Um, so that's there, and there's a lesson on that. We're now on our second lesson, which are, I guess, our Topic six point one. So first real lesson, and we're going to be looking at um, this is called Cartesian um, coordinate. You remember, probably remember learned this in like grade five or six or something, where you have x and y coordinates, right? And so it's like graphing. Um, so that's something you'll be using, and we'll be looking at x position, y position, rotation, and some of the properties. And we're also going to look at the sort of the general interface. Um, like I've done in the past, I've got kind of the things that you should be paying attention to here. Okay, so general interface, Cartesian coordinates. X, Y position, rotation, mathematical position changes, sprites, um, properties, costumes, and events. Okay, and um, let's get started. So this is, I'm working from the downloadable version. Um, you can work either way. Uh, it's up to you how you do this. Um, but I'm working for now on the download, downloaded version. So as a, an introduction to the interface, um, we've got sort of a, a, a few kind of color-coded circles here, and then we've got like a big long list what we're called block codes or code blocks, okay? And, and each of these relates to a category, okay? Um, and then, we so we've got this list here. We've got some tabs here that we'll get into in a minute. We'll take a look at the, what's there. We've got this area here, which is called the script window, okay? This is our, uh, our stage, I suppose. I'm not sure what it's called in Scratch, but in Flash, we would have called that a stage. It's where your, um, all your animation and work and everything is going to, your stories are all going to go, your game, whatever it is you're making. Uh, and then we've got a properties area that relates to the sprite that you've got selected. And we've got a stage, oh, it is called a stage. There we go, stage and the backdrops, okay? Um, and so we've got, that's a general um, uh, interface. What we're going to do today is just to do a couple of simple things. Um, so you'll notice that this um, sprite one, okay, this cat, uh, exists here and exists here and it's grayed out and then uh, no other no other sort of spots and that's because right now we've got it existing on our stage and this script which there's nothing here now but this script relates to the cat okay if i add in a new a new sprite which i can do by going here and selecting um whatever and we're down to ghost which is here okay and now i have a new um sprite and you'll see that that's been updated here Okay, so I've got, these are my available sprites that I've decided to use. There are properties related to that. So notice that when I click on each of these, the, the properties get updated. Okay, X and Y position, which you should remember. Um, and if I do this, you can see where the center of my X and Y graphing would be. Okay, um, and then there's a size and a direction. Now, direction's a little confusing. Uh, the way that works is that this is, would be, I think we're going to 0, 90, uh, 180. And then this goes to negative 90, okay? So that's the part that's a little kind of plucky, but um, whatever, get it. All right, so I'll set that back to 90, and then my position changes depending where I put things. Now, if I decide I do not need a character, I can just delete it here, and it gets rid of it from the stage, okay? All right, now, I mentioned that we would look at costumes. So costumes are, or these tabs, costumes are um, different states of the... Sprite. So we're looking at the first state of this graphic or this sprite. When I go to costumes, you'll see that there are four states that this can look like. And if I click here, you'll see it updates. If I click here, if I click here, there are four different states. Now, we could spend some time looking at how to animate and like this. If you've done any Illustrator, you'll recognize some of the tools here, but that's not the point of this. We're not going to be spending a lot of time doing kind of drawing skills in this program. We're going to be learning uh, logic. Um, so just sort of understand that you can make changes. So if I did need to make a change to this, I could do that. Um, be aware that, that it's a, it's not 
super difficult. You'd figure it out if you've done any Illustrator, um, but I'm going to say I wanted to change something. I could ungroup this and then select here, and then I could change the color, right? Um, I'm not going to do that for now, or I, but I'm just going to do that. But you'll see that changes, okay? I knew that go back. Okay, and then I'm going to go back out. So notice that these um, are all separate and they all exist kind of independently, okay? All right, I'm going to leave it back on Ghost A, which is the first of my four, um, four options. Go back to code. Okay, so we've got this guy here. Um, we've got some X and Y positions and size and direction. And then let's take a look at some of this. Now, you guys, some of you have already done a tutorial animating your name, so you'll recognize some of this. Um, but nonetheless, I'm going to go through it anyways and just talk about some of what you can see here. Okay, so X and Y position are obviously these here. And we can set or change those depending on what we want to do. So if I say I want to um, set my X position to a specific number, I can drag out my, my code block. And then when I click on it, it's going to do that. So you'll notice that it, it quickly updates my stage by clicking on it. Okay. Um, if I wanted to do a Y, again, I can set that to zero. When I click on this, it sets my Y position to zero as well. And then, of course, I can change this to 100. And when I click on it, it sets it to 100. And if I set it to negative 100, it sets it to negative 100. Okay. Notice also that these blocks fit together like this. So if I decided that I wanted to do both of these things, if I click this, it'll run both of them. Okay. Now, another thing to note is that it does them in order. So if I set my X and then set my Y, it's going to do this first and then do this. Okay. Um, the, the order of things matters. It won't matter at this point because we're just setting position, but as we move through this, you'll see that it makes a difference uh, that the order that you give these instructions, they get followed in the order that the computer gets this information. Okay, so that's setting an X and Y. We can also change an X and Y. Um, so if I said I want to change my X, okay, my X position right now is zero. If I click on this, it changes it to 10, and every time I click it, it goes through. Same thing with Y, I change that by Y and it increases. Okay, of course, if I want to make it go the opposite way, I can change it by negative. And of course, X does the same thing. Okay, so nothing super surprising there. And this will move diagonally. Okay. Some of the other ones you've seen here, turn. Okay, and you guys can, probably the best thing for you to do is create a sprite and then see what happens when you um, put some of these together. What happens if you go to random position? Oh, okay, it goes to random position. There's nothing super surprising. Um, and you'll notice that there are things like drop down positions here. So when you have a drop down, that means that there are more options. So I can either go to a random position, or in this case, I can go to a mouse pointer. So if I click on this, it's going to try and get to where my mouse pointer is. Now, because of the way this is currently set up, it's going to move towards where my mouse is because I, I can't click on this. But what I can do is I can add an event. Now, you guys will probably go through these some of these blue motions and see what they do. They do a bunch of different things. Um, here's point and direction. So if I change this to, I don't know, I said that was 190. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, minus 90. If I click on this, it flips it around to this position. Okay, if I change that back to 90 and click it, it changes it back to this position. So getting used to what that means will give you an idea of how this is going to be affected. Okay, and then of course I can add all of these things together and it'll do all of them at once. Okay, so play with these. Now, once you've figured out what some of these things do, one of the things I want to mention is that there's a, a difference between move 10 steps and change X position by 10 steps. Let's see what I'm talking about. I'm going to delete these. I'm just clicking delete on my keyboard to delete, delete the ones I don't want, or you can just drag them back into this list. <clears throat> I'm going to reset this guy back to 90. Put him in the middle here. Um, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, oops. I'm going to say move 10 steps, and he's going to move that way. And then I'm going to say change X by 10 steps. And it's going to do almost the same thing. Like it looks like it's doing the same thing, but there is a significant difference here. It's changing the X position by 10. This is moving 10 steps, and this is directional. So watch what happens if I change this in this way. This is going to change 15 degrees. Okay, so it's going to turn it. It's going to turn it 15 degrees. Okay, that part's okay. And then it's going to move it 10 to the right based on this, right? So I click this and it 
moving to the right. But this is moving 10 steps. So let's do this. I'm going to get rid of that. Put this guy back where he was. And I'm going to separate these out. So right now, moving 10 steps moves them to the right. But when I attach them, actually I'll do this. I'm going to turn them so that he's facing in this direction. And now I'm going to move him 10 steps. And notice that he's no longer moving no longer moving to the right. He's moving 10 steps directional, right? So there's a difference between these, okay? So once I set this position, he's no longer changing his necessarily his Y, sorry, his X position. He's changing his position relative to where he was. Okay? And now what's happening is he's making a, a weird circle. Okay, so this, this is a, just note that this and this seem similar, but there is a big difference there, okay? Right. Um, let's look at very quickly some events, okay? Because these are how right now to make things happen. I got to click here, but that's not going to work when I run this game. If I run this game and I'm doing this, I don't have that button to click, and nothing is happening. So let's take a look at how we use events to make things happen. When this sprite is clicked, I mentioned that this is called a sprite. When this sprite is clicked, move ten. So I'm going to run my game here. When I click on him, now he starts to move. Right, so that's using the when this sprite is clicked event. Some other events that we might use are when this um, flag is clicked. Right? And that means when I click this flag, then it's going to run that script. Okay? Then you can see it highlights it as it does. Okay, um, I think we did this previously as well. You can use when a key is, like a key on your keyboard is pressed. Okay? And you can select whichever one you want here. This is the A key. Okay, so there's a lot of these. And go through, take a look what's here. There are some you won't recognize yet. And we'll talk about, you know, we'll look at messages and broadcasting and what that means. That's a little more advanced, but it's not crazy difficult. You can probably figure it out by experimenting. But nonetheless, those are some things that are here. Okay, um, so I'm going to suggest that you try this. Um, take a look at what happens when you um, have a sprite with more than one costume. Okay, create an event and see what happens if instead of moving, you change the looks. So let's say uh, go to next costume. So if I click this, it goes to the next costume. Remember there were these costumes here? Well, it just changed to the next one, right? By clicking on it. I click it again, it goes to the next costume, and it goes to the next costume. Okay, so take a look at how that's working. Um, and what if I don't want it to be based on uh, this? How can I change things to be like, um, you know, go to a specific one? I want to say, when I click on this, go to specifically go to this third um, costume. Okay? And what happens if I change it to go to this one? When I click it, it's going to go to a second costume. Okay? Part of this is going to be experimentation on your part, guys. Trying to see what happens when you do different things. Um, I'm going to have you create some projects like this. Um, and what I'll do is I'll give you a second tutorial where I say, go and make exactly this. Part of this, so part one of this is going to be experimenting, following along with the tutorial you just saw right here. Uh, and part two is going to, I'm going to give you a little task to do um, and maybe what I'll do is I'll go through it with a little bit less explanation or maybe just do it and you guys can sort of watch the tutorial see how I do it and then follow along okay um, but experiment and try and and see what else is there there's a there's a ton of stuff here it's actually we're not coding per se I, will, I won't say that this is code um, this is logic which is related to code what we're not learning here is we're not learning syntax and syntax is you know, when I go to a website, for example, so take a look here, and I right click and I say uh, view page source. This is going to show me all the code, okay? And you'll notice here there's things like um, I don't know, we've got, we've got a whole bunch of stuff here. We've got styles and we've got um, functions and we've got things like um, these are all functions being built here, and there are like if statements, um, styles. All this stuff is being added um, in here. And when we get back to scratch you'll see that there are many of those things repeated here so we've got things like an if statement and we've got things like uh, down here we've got these are operators okay so these are things this is going to be greater than or less than or equal to we've got um, variables which we'll look at those and learn those as well so there's a lot here it's quite powerful um, and we can do a lot with a little so uh, experiment try see what's out there and then um, when you're done experimenting I'll go check out the second tutorial which will give you kind of a task to do. All right, great, have fun.